Hey, welcome back to Apollo Justice. We're going to be doing Doyen's fucking testimony. That's what it's called. The diva's lying, plain and simple. She's got nothing to back up her story. In the first place, she never heard my voice. She forgot the words because she had gunshots. As if. Didn't a detective in my sky hear those gunshots during the third set anyway? The shooting took place when I was on stage, man. Hmm. So you claim Lamy Wise's testimony was a lie? Hey, don't get me wrong. I dig what she's doing. Trying to protect that kid. And she's got the court eating vague statements out of her hand just because she's blind. You got too far, Dorian. Look, all I'm saying is you've got a reliable witness. Why not listen to the detective? Detective Sky? Hmm, I see. Mr. Justice, you may begin the cross examination. You didn't waste any time finding a weak spot. I can't do this with Lamio's testimony alone. I'll have to find some other way to prove when the shooting took place. Leave his lying, plain and simple, and she got nothing to, uh, nothing to back it up her story. You don't have any proof she was lying! Oh yeah, kid. You saying I lied? No, I, I'm just saying, uh... Apollo, glare back at him. I couldn't help it, I flinched my reflex. Detective Kusen! Yeah, what do you want? Um, uh, nothing. Apollo, chin up! Back straight! You're wilting! This guy's hot as nails. He makes walking look downright cooperative. Look, there's no way the diva remembers my voice. In the first place, she had never heard my voice. You never talked to her, even though you were playing in the same concert? Not a word, as far as I can recall. But uh, weren't there planning sessions or something? Gavin took care of all that himself. Dalian wasn't involved in any of the meetings with her. Ugh. As if you can just go around remembering everyone's voice like that anyway. Only an idiot would believe that. It's, like, it's not like I have a very distinct voice from anybody else. <laughs> Why we was here, it is very sensitive. She could remember him if he heard him, I'm sure of it. I just can't prove it. And I need proof. She forgot the words because she heard the gunshots? As if. We know she missed the words. The mixing board proved it! Oh yeah, there was a mistake. But blame it on gunshots is just a lame excuse. What do you mean? The mixing board proves what? It proves there was a mistake in the song. A, a miscue. So she just flubbed it up big time, that's all. She spins the story about a gunshot to protect the kid and cover for her own goof. Man, I'd have to hand it to her if she was sticking it to me at the same time. Alien, watch what you say. Let me was an artist. She just flubbed it up. <laughs> that's no small accusation for a performer of her caliber. Eh? She got to you all right. I can see it in your eyes. I tell you, most of her stuff is so pretentious. It's just over my head. I'm detecting a rift in the governor's ranks. Anyway, she's too close to defend it. Her testimony can't be trusted. You ask me, I'd go with Detective Sky's story of the drop of a pick. Didn't Detective Emma Sky hear those gunshots during the third set anyway? Actually, I was there too. So I hear, which means you heard them too, right? The gunshots? Yes. We heard gunshots. Neither do I or nor Emma actually saw the shooting on you. Eh. I guess you and Lamua got the same excuse then. We know one thing for certain here. There were gunshot-like sounds that emanated from that room during the third set. But we must determine is whether those sounds were actually gunshots. Bucky oh, heard them too. Remember he said he ran for the air duct when he heard about them? So, how do we figure out what, just what those gunshots during the third set were? Well, you can tell me right now. Wait, say that again? You can tell me that right now. What, 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 the firecracker? That's the wrong place. Objection! Some things were found at the crime scene after yesterday's trial. What things? The first thing, the first was this small device. It's the remote trigger the igniter. Igniter. What the fuck? Correct. And one more thing. Mmm. <laughs> this is a gunpowder we found on these fragments. 
We have a report that there was something like a firecracker. Huh? How did Gavin know about this? What? You think Detective Sky works for you? I received a report this morning before coming here. That's when I made my decision, actually. What decision is this, Prosecutor Gavin? I registered Darian as a witness in today's trial. Just in case. This raises another possibility. Those gunshot-like sounds during the third set could have been two firecrackers vague to go off by remote control! Ha <laughs> ha! You got an active imagination, don't you? But you shouldn't say every little thing you think. The explanation there seems a bit too convenient to me. How so? So you're saying these firecrackers just happened to go off right when two witnesses came walking by? Ah! That's right. Darian was out on stage when it happened, Apollo. How would he know someone was backstage right then? A firecracker goes off in the forest. There's no one there to hear. You get my drift? Why go through the trouble, man? How do I explain this? You may not look it, but Darian is a gifted detective. Show any weakness and he should have found it. You may not look it, partner. Gee, thanks, man. That's what minds me. I happened to pass through that very hallway several times that day myself, and I saw something odd there just before the third set. Something odd? A headset. The kind all of the band and staff members were wearing. That's right. We picked this up in front of the door to that dressing room. What if that headset wasn't dropped, but placed? And what if it was turned on? You could hear what was going on in that hallway. Even if you were out on stage! Eh, who side are you on, Gavin? Listen to me, Darian. <laughs> there are no sides in the court of law. Which is why I now turn to you, Air Forehead. I have a question for you. Huh? For me? The igniter and the burnt fragments that were found at the scene of the crime. It's certainly a possibility that they were part of a ruse to fake the sound of gunshots. Throw the headset from the hallway into the mix, and you could fabricate an alibi. But we're still not closer to proving anything. Those gunshots might have been real or fake. We can't say. Ugh. You raised the possibility that the shots heard during the third set were faked. Now you need to prove the other half of the case. The other half? Look, I'll just tell him. He wants you to prove the thing went down in the second act. Well, our little piano player was on stage. That right, Gavin? Indeed. If you can't prove that, then to continue this cross-examination will be pointless. Hmm. Well, Mr. Justice, can you prove the crime took place during the second set? Uh, yeah, I think. You better know, Apollo. Otherwise, we're through. It can be proven! You make it sound like someone else is going to come along and do it for you. Let's continue with the cross-examination then, shall we? Witness, your testimony, if you would. This isn't going to be easy. Uh, let me take a look at the mixing board. Because now we can hear the guitar serenade. Specifically, the beginning of the second set. Better. I think that Lamy Rose would probably be the important part here. Because she fucked up. At the start of the second. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Might have noticed it. <laughs> I think I may have heard someone shutting a trash can. Okay. Pretty right, like a metal trash can, like once you know, the cats run over. You know, I think that, but I don't think the Houston Astros were there at the time. Oh, so I thought I heard someone mention Jose Altuve's name. Oh shit! You know, well, I mean, he didn't take his shirt off, so he could have been wearing, you know, a thing with a trigger. And mm -hmm. probably I, was. I think you wanted something here. I need some decisive proof and fast. Where did it come from? Eh, yeah, you ready, kid? Cause I am. 
The shooting took place during the second set. If you're so sure, let me see your proof. We got it. Which is... <laughs> you can hear the gunshot. Oh, there we go. It seems there was clear proof left behind. Right here in Lamio's song. His song? What exactly is this device thingy? A new variety of gramophone, perhaps? Come on, we just used this, and don't get me started on a gramophone. This device was used to record the performance part by part. Part? We move the slightest to adjust the volume. Each instrument is adjustable separately. Lamio's voice included. Ho ho! But what does this prove? According to Lamua's testimony, at the moment of the shooting, she forgot the words to the song. Ah, we went in to examine the recording at that moment, y'all. We might even hear those gunshots. Exactly. Ah, uh, ridiculous. How are you supposed to hear gunshots back in that dressing room out on stage? Have you forgotten, Darian? We were all wearing these headsets. Oh. We were all deeply involved in that performance. But Lamio's headset would have picked up what she heard all the same. Then let's get to analyzing the recording. Right now! Lamio stopped singing when she heard the shots fired. Find the spot and I'll find the gunshots. Uh, I was, uh. Slider one right there at the fucking beginning. Nope. Take that! I believe I got it. Your Honor, let's get closer to this part. This is the track with Lamio's vocals. Away the keys. My heart held on to them so tight. Ah! Pleasure. I did hear something faintly there, yes. Why, it sounded like a gunshot! Whoa! This has to be some kind of mistake. What the fuck? I, I messed that up bad. <laughs> Some kind I, of mistake. I believe a case has been made. Gunshots were heard during the second set, which means Lamio's testimony was true. <laughs> Order! So, she was telling the truth about what she heard. It was the other man speaking, not Mr. Letus. Well, what did he say? It's over. Press the switch, now. Just after that, there was a gunshot, and then the guitar caught on fire. Detective Crescent, you went on stage during the second set. You could have done it. Hmm, but why did he only we only hear one gunshot on the recording? Why two bullets fired from this weapon? Lamio was moving through the air vent, Your Honor. She must have not been close enough there for her mic to catch the first shot. But then, as she passed over the dressing room, the gun fired again, and Mr. Latusa's life was taken. Well, Detective Kassin? Ah, uh, once again I am reminded of something. A performance that day. Your performance? Seeing the mixing board jogged my memory. You were there too, Air Floyd. What is it with today? Problem after problem, oh dumb. My argument starts by guitar basic cases busted. My guitar's been burnt to a crisp. To top it all off, someone's dead. And then there was that performance just now. What was that all about? This part is off. Which is that? Uh, it's like a guitar. Eh. It was you, Dalian. I thought it uh, I thought it strange at the time. How could you miss such a simple cue? I know you. I know how you play. You're better than that. Yeah, well, I... You what? And Prosecutor Gavin, what are you getting at? I'm talking about the murder weapon, Miss Lutus' 45 caliber hand cannon. As we have learned, even the shooter doesn't go unscarred with a revolver that size. The kickback is enough to dislocate your shoulder if you're an amateur. Wait, you mean his plane was affected because he hurt himself shooting that revolver? Ah, you're forgetting something. Yes, Detective Crescent. I'm a trained police officer, you know. Her firearm training, plenty of it. I'm no amateur. Standard sidearms issued to police officers is a 38 caliber weapon. A much tamer beast. Also, the murder weapon belonged to the victim, Mr. Latus. It suggests there was a struggle between killer and victim. So, the killer might not have been holding the revolver correctly when he fired. Is that what you mean? 
That's not tied to good to me, yes. Holy shit! Well, does the witness have anything to say? To this? Detective Crescent! What I want to ask is what Mr. Sleeve rolled up ready for action as to say. Hey you, attorney. Me? Exactly which piece of evidence is decisive again? You got a little noise on a tape, that could be anything. And you have an alleged guitar cue missed due to a 45 caliber kickback. I wait for this case, Kevin. I really do. You can line up your little weak pieces of evidence all you want. I didn't shoot that manager. That's the obvious truth. Hmm. The witness has a point. The defense's arguments, while persuasive, are not de decisive. I believe we should hear what the witness has to say in response to the case so far. Your testimony, please, Detective Crescent. Tell us your reasons why you couldn't have done it. Come on, why would I even want to kill that manager? You want a reason? Easy. I got no motive, man. This has that Davis first trip to this country, right? How could I possibly know a manager? If I didn't know him, why would I want to kill him? Hmm, a simple reason indeed. Prosecutor Gavin, is it the case that Mr. Latouse had not been to our country before? According to our records, yes, not even once. I see. Very well. Mr. Justice, you may begin the cross examination. Great, right, now I need the final motive. Uh, come on, why would I even want to kill that manager? Who uh, manager? Sure, but, but Mr. Latus was. Uh... All right. Sorry. An Interpol agent, wasn't he? I must have trouble picturing that big lunk as an undercover cop, you dig? And not a very good one, seeing as how he got wasted. Ha 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 he had plenty of time to come up with a motive of his own. Ugh. More than I sure did. I mean, think about it. This was that diva's first trip to this country, right? Dylan, you're a detective with, in with international affairs? Yeah, what of it? Even if this wasn't Mr. Latusa's first trip to this country, you still could have met him prior to the concert. Huh? Well, don't you take any international trips in international affairs? That's right. Well, Detective Crescent. <laughs> That's your game, is it? Confess I'd better confess. Guess I'd better <laughs> confess him. Confess? Yeah. It's a bit of an embarrassment, but I've never been sent overseas. What? But you went international. See, me and Plane's got a difference of opinion. We don't like each other much. My condolences are fired, but he is telling the truth. He's never set foot outside the country. I can guarantee it. As it turns out, my division has plenty of work to do locally as well. That's so unfair! How could I possibly know who managed it? So you didn't fraternize with him at all during the concert? Fraternize? Ah! I don't think we exchanged a single word. As if anyone would want to talk to that old Eastern blockhead. Now the ladies! This is a different matter altogether. So you see. If I didn't know him, why would I want to kill him? You sure about that? What? What? What the look off your face before I do it for you? Listen, you try throwing out one of your wild accusations. I'll throw it back at you so hard you forget who you're accusing of what? It's Fred. Fred, it's best if you let your evidence do the talking, y'all. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Man, what evidence? That's what I want to know. So he's using this his, this motive question as ammunition, huh? Well, I've got ammunition too. Evidence, evidence. What, 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 what is it? What is the motive? Uh, his motive for killing him is because he knew he knew him. He knew his fucking code. 
He knew his. He knew. He knew the shit he was doing. Okay, so he knew he was an Interpol agent. Why yeah. is that? A, why is that a problem? Because they're fucking enemies. They're fucking foes, man. We don't have proof of that. <laughs> we don't have proof. Let's look at the. Let's look at the evidence here. All right, let's see. Oh, uh, don't worry about that. No, uh, don't worry. No. No. Uh, yeah. no, no. No. That's Gavin's. Don't worry about that. No. 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 Oh, the Enchiridas has to something to do with it. Um. I think this might be the reason. Yeah. Your Honor, take a look at this. What's that? Hmm, looks like candy. Uh, it's not. Uh, don't lick it, please. Oh. Detective Pissend, <laughs> ever seen this? <laughs> Did you lick it? No. Just a, a bug in my mouth. Oh, okay. Looks like a piece of candy. What it is, is evident. Don't lick it before you try it. Specifically, this is a replica of a cocoon. It was found among the victim's belongings. A cocoon? Never seen one that color? It is a variety only found in the Republic of Bulgaria. <laughs> Nowhere else. Where's that? All right. Well, what is this <laughs> cocoon replica doing in my courtroom? Surely this has nothing to do with the motive for killing Mr. Tattoos? Does it? It does! Wait! I mean, I think it does. You don't sound too confident, man. A cocoon? Is it one of those silky cocoons? The kind that you can make, well, silk out of? Not this one. This cocoon makes a powerful curative. A curative? For oh, what? Apparently it is most efficacious. Efficacious? Efficacious? Efficacious. That might be it. Efficacious at cleaning the disease thought incurable. It is the only medicine of its kind. However, it is illegal to take one of these healing cocoons out of Virginia. Whatever for? It is such a miracle cure, why not share it with the world? Yeah, that's what I've been wondering. We look into the matter at some length. Apparently, it isn't difficult at all to manufacture the remedy from the cocoon. Yet, if you change the process only slightly, you can easily make a large quantity of something else entirely. A deadly poison, in fact. What? There was an incident several years ago where some of these got out into onto the black market. It caused quite the commotion in the global community. Though the media was kept, uh, kept largely unaware. Hmm, intriguing. All this has led to is a, all this has led to a strict ban on the cocoons' export. One rigidly enforced by Interpol, among others. Interpol. Right. The victim Romain Latus was an Interpol agent. Detective Crescent, you insist on referring to him as a manager. But that's a misle- that is misleading! Romain Latus wasn't killed as a manager, he was killed as an undercover agent! I was trying to smuggle this gumball into the country. That's what you're trying to say. I'm saying that could well be a motive for murder. Yeah, so I was gonna settle it on the black market. Make myself a pretty penny. Ridiculous! I mean, totally unthinkable. Unthinkable, you say? Why? Perhaps it's time for another testimony. About this smuggling of cocoons business. International Affairs got a memo about these cocoons. And it pulls all hot and bothered about them. Can't sell them on the black market. Too dangerous. Yeah, cocoon smuggling ain't exactly lucrative anymore. Man, I'm in International Affairs. I know the deal. Indeed. Paul wanted these cocoons bad enough to send Mr. Latouse undercover. The kids think up the craziest things. But no way am I gonna risk life and limb. Just to get my hands on some dirty cocoon money. Not the most noble of statements, but duly noted. According to reports, these cocoons top Interpol's list. Selling them to an underground organization would be risky. Hmm, very well. You may begin the GO examination. This is the only motive I've got. He was up to something, and I'm going to find out what. International Affairs got a memo about these good queens. Not memo! 
That's how you knew about the about the cocoons. Oh, nice one, nice one. I'm running scared now. You had to know about the cocoons to plan this. Just how well known are these cocoons? I'm embarrassed to admit it, but I'd never heard of them. Well, let me what knew about them, though not their use. Reports indicate that there were still there were ongoing efforts to control information about the cocoons. Those people only know that they're illegal to export. That's all. Then I've nothing to be embarrassed about after all. Except people like me know about them are a minority, eh? That includes everyone in international for international affairs, man. And everyone in Interpol too, for that matter. Yeah. I suppose all hot and bothered about them. So the uh, other Interpol agents like Mr. Latus? All over the world, likely. Deep under cover, most of them. That's why these cocoons are too hot for the black market. Yeah, you don't want Interpol sniffing through your wares. Most come to conclusion that... Can't sell them on the black market, too dangerous. Dangerous? Yeah, Interpol finds you, they race you in a spot. Another marketeer might think you're part of a sting and take you out himself. Times have change. Yeah, Cocoon Smuggling ain't exactly lucrative anymore. Uh, but, uh, wouldn't scarcity drive up prices? Yeah, and attention. Every gangster and his brother would want a piece of that action. They turn your forehead into Swiss cheese before you would say, Objection? Maybe we could get them to cut this air too. Who's on trial here again? Man, you so obviously know nothing about the market. That's a bad thing? Don't even try to bash with me about this stuff. Man, I'm in international affairs. I know the deal. Which is why you'd know how to find a loophole in the system. Hey, you can say what you want about me. But back off international affairs. There ain't no loopholes, okay? What do you think we are, Boy Scouts? That wasn't what I was trying to... Um... Down, Dalian. It's as you say. There are no loopholes, at least in the case of these cocoons. International affairs, Interpol, and Bokinian customs are all watching. Gee, we know what we're doing. Now, like some yipping little doggies that lap up every word that Diva says. Why, I order? Order what? You want some of this? <laughs> Chill, both of you. Let's do the school, yeah? Ugh, screw cool, I want this guy's head on a stick! The replica has to be... has to be the like, key to his motive. There's gotta be a way to find out what he was up to. Okay. So, what am I doing? Okay, Interest Spirit's got a memo about these cocoons, Interpol's all hot and bothered about them, can't sell them Black Market, too dangerous. Yeah, cocoon smuggling is exactly lucrative anymore. Man, I'm in International Affairs, I know the deal. Okay, so... Alright. So, we have... I would say, so, are we trying to use the ring, or are we doing evidence? We're doing evidence. So, uh, try to think of, like, why he would want the cocoon. He's got incuritis. No. His, his mom's would, got incuritis. No. He's gonna have it. He has the He's gene. gonna have it. Uh, he wants it because, um... I don't care about that. We don't even know what that says. Yeah, yeah it's just about the performance. So there. Okay, not, the, not that. Okay, let's read this article. It's all good, yeah. Acute okay, syndrome, syndrome, first, first case, case in the country. country. Disease strikes closer to the home than ever before. And it's the Chief Justice's son who's inflicted with it. That's right. So the Chief Justice has hired him to get it. Okay, we can think about that, so, like... Or he's the Chief Justice's son! Oh, my God! All right, but I'm gonna present this evidence in... The next episode. So, thank you for watching this episode. I apologize for making sure to like, subscribe, and I'll be notified of the video, which is... Every single day. Bye.